I'm Scott. And I've got a Guild Starfire here from 1966. It was made in Hoboken, New Jersey. But 66 was the year that they moved to Westerly, Rhode Island. Um, this one has a tag inside that says New Jersey, so that must be the deal, unless they had leftover tags and they just went ahead and used them at the new factory. But anyways, the Starfire. It, this guitar first hit the scene in 1960, and uh, like I said before, this is a 66, and of course it's in for a neck reset. A customer found me on social media and uh, saw that I was doing a lot of these uh, hollow body neck resets for electric guitars and uh, shipped it down from Virginia um, and I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. So let's take a look at this neck reset deal. We've got an action here at the 12th fret of 12 64ths which is totally unplayable, unreasonable string action for an electric guitar. Um, we want to get it down to you know good old 4 64ths about a third of where it is there. So we're going to have to steam this joint, separate this from the body, and uh, take it all apart. He was a little bit worried about this uh, cutaway area here, how the binding has a little ledge. It's, uh, it's shrunken and it's pulled away from its groove or the channel. And it's rock solid. It's not like unglued or anything, but we'll just see how it goes as I heat it up. Maybe uh, we can push it back into place if it gets hot enough, but I don't want to damage anything by overheating. Brazilian rosewood. It will be getting a fret job too, which is great, because these are down to 30 thousandths of an inch, and a lot of them have deep, deep grooves. A lot of the frets are badly damaged. I can't tell from that angle, but um, that's good because after a neck reset it's nice to do a refret. Level down the board, get nice low action, no buzz. This one's going to be getting some new tuners. These look like something off of like a, a 70s guitar, 1970s Japanese guitar. I've had several that, that looked like this. And we're going to get go with the uh, Grover Stay Tight. Serial number on this guitar is EK1891. Very interesting. Nice checking lines. A little bit of buckle rash there on the back. This guitar was well loved and played. Go around the edges. I want to break apart any buildup of lacquer. It may have. Uh, chip off when I separate the neck but what I'm feeling right here is that the neck is already kind of loose. Well, that's hopefully gonna make my job a little bit cleaner. Go around the edges. The binding's lifting right here. It's loose. That one can be glued down no problem. Um, this lacquer is pretty much chipped away already here. It's probably going to chip some more when the neck comes off. Oh well. Hopefully we can just do a little bit of touch up and not have to do anything too major. See the neck's kind of... I don't know. Let's get there. Looks like somebody dropped their guitar pick down here. I think it maybe it's there for a reason. Very strange. Hmm. I think we'll be removing that. These are some real good sounding pickups. I played it a little for a little while and uh, I like the sound of it. I think I'll wrap this up and stick her down in there and wrap her up. I'm also going to remove this one. The 
this is just a floating bridge aluminum kind of cool pull them now we got to drill some holes I'll mark the base side of each fret I don't think we'll have to pull any more of them. All right, so as per usual, the steam needle is going to go in these holes and the electric heaters are going to go in these two holes and then these steam needle holes need to be uh, enlarged a little bit more than these and as usual I had to angle the drill bit slightly towards the center and slightly towards the nut just slightly to find that pocket now I'll open it up wider for the First thing I'll do down here is uh, use this iron to heat up the fretboard extension just like I would on an acoustic guitar. And I've got a heat lamp ready to go for heating up my spatulas so that I can, those are nice and hot when I try to slide them down in between. I decided to just use the iron back here. I can heat up this blade with the iron. A little water on it. Hear that sizzle? See that steam? You know it's hot. But boy, this the glue they used, the guild used, is some strong glue. You can see it's starting to move. I had that iron right here for about 15 minutes. But I think right now we're starting to make some progress. Look at that. So right now I think the left side of my brain is saying, okay, you're halfway there. Just give it a little more, you know, put a little more muscle into it and uh go the rest of the way real quick but the right side of my brain is saying wait heat it up some more let with this you know very light touch let that knife find its way all the way through because um, when you start forcing it it's gonna dive down into the wood fibers and I wanna keep it right on that glue line it's just a just a you know eyelash thick that air, that glue line but it is strong so I'll let this sit for another eight minutes or so and I'll go back in hopefully that'll do it now we're gonna let these uh, electric heaters go for 12 minutes these are the hot wire foam factory cutters foam cutting heaters and we're trying to get the glue warmed up between the heel and the, the side here. They're known to put a crap load of glue in that area, which isn't good for us guitar repair guys, but it's kind of good for keeping the neck on for 50 years. All right, I'm ready to go for some steam. I got some protection on. I got goggles and I got gloves.
lot of people grab the neck and move the neck around. I prefer to grab the body and keep the neck in a vise. I also put the Johnson's paste wax all around the area. Hopefully if it blushes, it'll be blushing the dirt and the wax and not the actual lacquer. Try to put it in the Stumac neck removal jig now. Oh, didn't really need the neck removal jig. It was kind of like the Epiphone Casino thing. I just grabbed it. I just grabbed it like that and started wiggling and it got real gooey all of a sudden and it came off. And it looks like there's little pieces of wood here and there that came off. For the most part, we're in pretty good shape. I got this came loose, and uh, I think I'll clamp it together so the neck block stays where it's supposed to. And uh, I'll tidy up all this. This is kind of sandwiching the neck block back down to the top and back, just in case it came loose. I didn't really see that it did. I see that. We saw the binding was loose before, but this side looks like it's good. This side has a little movement to it. And this is the reason that most luthiers will not take on this job, is because we damaged the finish. A little piece of veneer came off. But uh, I think it's worth the couple extra hours that it'll take to uh, do that finish touch-up, to have a guitar this, that sounds this good and have it playable again. Um, and I build that into the cost of the neck reset, you know. You gotta figure this stuff's gonna happen. And, uh, and that's not too bad. I've had a lot worse. Sometimes those necks are made of three or five pieces and they delaminate. That's a, that's a nightmare. So this ain't too bad. We'll get moving along. Next, I start on the touch-ups. But first, I'd like to say... I really am enjoying this Total Vice number no. seven. And it's called the Swing Arm Pedestal with the Total Vice number no. seven. It, I love the way it just holds the guitar upright like that so I can work on the finish repair. Don't you? Anyways, let's zoom in on that finish repair. You'll recall that a little piece of the finish chipped off right next to the strap button hole. And we're gonna be trying to add that layer of colored lacquer back into that. I'm going to use a color called Bordeaux. I also cobbled together a little bit of wood here and there on this. You know, these are all laminates or veneers because it's kind of a, like a plywood construction. And when I separated the neck, some of the pieces disintegrated. I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, there was a piece of binding that was in here that got toasted also. So I kind of recreated that. Okay, I got a little Bordeaux in this cup and a little bit of shellac 
in the bottom. So you've got the shellac in the bottom and the Bordeaux on the around the edge. Alright, that's some real microscopic kind of work right there. Bordeaux! Looks good. So much overhead lighting, it's hard to tell. I think a little bit more right here. It's not even flowing out. Hold on. A little bit more here and here. Here, here. That's a. That's all. I think that'll do it. Bordeaux is your bro. I'm gonna put a barrier coat, fill and finish thin on there. Is the glue boost? And I'll put a top coat of lacquer on there. I like to point it out, but I have a well ventilated area here. I've got an exhaust fan. Pulling that fill and finish nastiness out the, into the attic. But if you're in an enclosed room with no windows, maybe move outside using that stuff. I ended up doing about five thin coats of that fill and finish thin. I I decided that, you know, as lacquer shrinks down, it might be just too much of a hole to fill. So I'll just give myself a head start with that fill and finish. Now I'm sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. It's that adhesive backed sandpaper, I just stick it to the eighth inch. I think it's like a I don't know, two millimeter thick piece of optics. It's kind of like a plexiglass material. You get it over at Lowe's. I don't know what they sell it for. I don't know what people use this for other than sand paint, sanding. Well, you're probably going to get bored watching this, so I'm going to do this on my own. We'll come back and brush on a little thing of lacquer when I, when I get it smooth. That didn't take long at all, really. And if I want to know or get a little idea of what it's going to look like once I spread that lacquer on there, I just wipe it with some naphtha on a Q-tip, blow it dry, and I think it looked pretty good. So... I've got lacquer. It's on a. It's uh, mixed with the lacquer retarder. I'm gonna brush it on. A little brushy brush. Let it shrink back and come back and see what it looks like in an hour. I whipped up a little bit of a thicker batch 
of lacquer. This has a little more body to it. I can just hear them old farts right now. You can't brush lacquer on an old guild. You'll destroy the value of it. Oh, I just love those old guys. I always clean my brush with straight up lacquer thinner as soon as I'm done after each coat. And I'm always under this little exhaust fan right here. So, hopefully I don't get sick. Hopefully I'll continue to be able to do this. If I take the appropriate precautions. Now I'll start preparing the heel. I like to use this quarter inch chisel. I've got it held nicely in this total vise number seven. And uh, there's a bit of glue and stuff still present. So kind of cleaning that up as I go. It already has kind of an undercut shape to it back there. And this goes on for a while. This is just a standard little procedure. We'll be removing, we'll be leaving, be leaving the per whole perimeter as it is for now. And then I'll show you how I calculate how much material that I'm going to remove from that perimeter. So here's where the math comes in. This is the amount that I'd like to lower the saddle. It's about an eighth of an inch, 0.125. The neck heel is 1.75 inch and three quarters in length. And the distance from the neck to body joint to the uh, saddle is 12.5, about a foot. So I take eighth of an inch times one and three quarters divided by twelve and a half equals point zero one seven five that is about half a millimeter so that's where I'll make my mark on the heel You got the half a millimeter, 0.5. Let's see if I can make a mark here. Yep, 
it looks like about where that lacquer is missing there that's that's half a millimeter right there right there so we'll sand back to that till that chipped out lacquer is gone and this is 80 grit sandpaper on a piece of Lexan it's nice and straight same thing to the other side. So instead of making a mark on this side I just I counted how many swipes I was doing. I'll just do the same over here. So I sanded here, and I sanded here, which leaves a high spot here. Now I'll go in with a chisel and get rid of that high hump. And I can check it with a straight edge. Chisel off a little bit, check with a straight edge, and uh, get it to us. See where we're at. see here still got a little ways to go keep going I guess this video is long enough for this week guys I'm gonna wrap this one up and uh, give that lacquer that I've been brushing on a week to cure and uh, we'll see you here next week, hopefully, with episode two. I hope I can get it all done in two episodes. But if not, we'll make it three. And since I've never seen a Guild Starfire neck reset video on YouTube, and this is the first one, we'll just have to make it a two or three episode journey. So the finish repair is looking great. Thanks for tuning in and sticking around to the end, and we'll catch you later.